Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. Today is Thursday. Week's almost over. Quarter's almost over. Month's almost over. A lot went on. <laughs> I think a lot of people right now are, are taking a step back, trying to take a, maybe a deep breath and figure out what just happened in the past um, two quarters, right? You know, you had a market that blasted off to start the year, two igniting bars. You then had a pretty steady rally for what? You know, the first six weeks, we took out 1474, went to 1530. You know, let's go to the chart. I'll talk about it instead of me going to the chart after. I'm just doing this out of my head. So let's go to the, let's go to the, the SPX, okay? Not my side angle because my hair is receding. Okay, there we go. <laughs> There's my receding hairline again. Um, <laughs> all right. I think my production guy is at a Thursday happy hour already. Anyway, with that said, you know, here's the, the year that the, the, the quarter that was, okay? This was that 1474 pivot. Remember that? Okay, this was when we put in the high that September of 2012. Okay, this was to start the year. I'm gonna take a small little trip down memory lane because I'm not gonna be doing this tomorrow. Tomorrow I head out to the Hamptons early. Um, wife's already out there. That's what you do over the summer. You try and enjoy yourself. So anyway, this was the start of the year. Here was your igniting bar, two day move. Boom, took out 1474, game on. Follow the eight-day moving average all the way up to, what was that, 1530. That was the pivot you were supposed to write down and say, okay, 1530 could be the short-term top. Could. Could, could, could is the real word there. What happened? Pulled in. I think this was the Italian elections. Okay, then what transpired in that area? That was your then, uh, what was this, 3.5% pullback? And what did we do? We bounced back into the halfway point and the bears had no control. Wound up holding higher, back to portfolio approach, took out the highs, and then boom. This was your next area. This was the next time we followed the 8 and 21 day moving average, which is what I use to have portfolio approach. Okay, we stayed with it. This was that um, prior two year high. If you wanna take a quick look here, go to the monthly, why that was important. Remember this, remember this double top that we talked about taking out? That was right here, right around this, going across. That's how you got this price point. Okay, this peak right here was um, 1576, and this was 1552. So remember, we kept talking about 1552 to 1576. So that was that area. Okay, that's why it was important. Where we're going to break above this double top and then have a really nice move to the upside. That's what happened. But if you remember, it went right through and then failed. Okay, so that's when every bear in the world said, okay, this rally is over. Okay, we came back, pulled in, what did we do? We held the 50-day, held the trend line coming in all the way from November. Then you bounce back. Bears are like, okay, we could short this bounce. Some people even thought maybe we would build a head and shoulders top, which I mapped that out too. But what happened? We penetrated. Penetrated through, went sideways, broke above that high right here. And then we had uh, an overheated market right into this outside day. And I think on this day was what... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, May 21st, the day before the outside day, was the day Goldman Sachs raised its targets for all of uh, 2013 and beyond. And that's when I think M. Whitney, a lot of people started coming on TV, started talking about higher numbers. And lo and behold, Big Ben spoke. And when he speaks, sometimes something goes on. And that was your outside day. That was your first true, I wouldn't say true, bearish candle because this was a pretty damn bearish candle here, except for it, you know, nothing uh, evolved from it. That's why we say also this is a day to take notice, a day to look to see what could be next. Okay, and what happened here on that day to take notice when you take risk off, when you maybe get net short, you had this upper wedge, this time resolving through 1640 to the downside, right? Here's your 1640 resolving to the downside. And then what happened? Little bounce back, but on this retest, it didn't penetrate. Okay, that's when we got to move down to the 50 day. Came back up to the trend line, double bottom on the 50 day, two nice trades. If you took the, the red dog reversal tactic, then this was when the Fed met, breakout failure, sell signal number two, just like this one. And then sell signal number three was right here, or this was your confirmation. You know, on Twitter, I, I kid around, I talk about, you know, when IBD goes into market correction or market confirmed uptrend. You know, this is when you had the warning side, and then this, I feel like, aggressively was a spot to be done with your longs, maybe get short. But then they wait till the end of the day for this to happen, <laughs> to go into market uh, correction. Okay, and then what happened there? Like 20 handles later, we had the bounce. But anyway, you know, so here we are now. Okay, we came into this week, um, I do believe, 
it was uh, right here, right? We came into the week not sure what was going to take place. So if you think about it, you know, come back to me. I said, okay, what could happen this week? We went from 1687 all the way down through the 50 day, all the way down to perhaps the 100 day. Maybe we see the 100 day quickly, or I think that might have been that Friday, whatever. You know, what could they do? Maybe they want to do some performance um, marking or some, you know, window dressing, which I answered a lot of questions about that this week. So my tactical strategy was let's find a pivot low and let's trade verse it, watch it build, get some confirmation that it could, you know, contain itself to the upside and then do a retest of the 50 day moving average. So it always feels easier when you look back, but <laughs> here's the chart again. You go back to the chart, now my receding hairline profile and boom, that's what happened. Okay, went through the 100 day, came back up. That was the, the day that it was doji style on uh, you know, the spiders, which I'll just use this for now. Then what did it do? It held higher. It held above the 100 day, giving you some confirmation to add. Some might have even added when we took out this little pivot area. And then, you know, I know yesterday is when I sold the majority of my longs, okay? And then today, if you held your longs, congratulations, you know, you had your third day. This was the fourth day off the lows, right into resistance, right into retesting this broken trend line. And if you look closely at it, that's where we are, okay? There are some signs that maybe this was it, okay? Because you have some regional banks breaking out, you have some tech stocks acting okay, you know, but again, you know, tactically, this was your trade. And then now it made some sense. Like I'm going out net short to short against this. I'm kind of prepared in my head that if they wanted to mess with everybody, either they would, you know, squeeze it through this gap and fill it a little bit more and, 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 and have that pain trade right there, or, you know, stop it right before, which is what they did. And then tomorrow, maybe gap down. You could see it a little bit more um, in the spiders. Spiders, you know, this is, you know, this was that doji. Remember the doji and the importance of a doji is if it trades above either the prior day low or the prior day high, this time was a doji closed above it. That was your, you know, invitation to be long above the 100 day also. And then here we are failing right at the gap. Now, was that too easy? It's a big question here. Did they close this week so everyone feels really comfortable going home short and then tomorrow they gap us up into here? It could happen. That's why I'm pretty much, you know, tier one or maybe tier one and a quarter, um, you know, because I'm pretty much prepared that if they want to do what they've been doing all year with the pain trade, either they would stop it before because people thought maybe it would get there, which is what they somewhat did, or trigger it through it, squeeze the shorts, fill a portion of the gap, and then whatever. But all in all, from 156 up to 161 and change, it made sense to, to start your, you know, maybe fade, or even if it's just a tactical fade where you could short this for a move back, to, to maybe hold higher, then build, and then maybe we see if things act better for a bigger move, or if we just fail here, come in, and you know maybe maybe just like we tested the 50-day at this area, you know after failing there, maybe the market wants to come in and retest this 100-day, which would be nice. It'd be nice not to just have a you know an elevator down, elevator up. You know if we had you know some kind of stair steps that you could tactically trade the ranges of. So anyway. Um, with that said, uh, a lot of individuals, <laughs> okay, <laughs> do we have liquid lunches back there, Andrew? <laughs> I'm only kidding. That never happens. Um, <laughs> he likes shakes for lunch, you know, nice and fruity. Um, so with that said, uh, you know, here we are. Tomorrow's Friday. Second quarter's done. Half the year's done. This is when traders look into themselves and they're, you know, they get either very happy of the way they performed or, or you get pissed off or, you know, you look at your performance and you start either blaming everyone around you, including the market, or you take accountability and you think to yourself, what did I do wrong? Did I have short in the brain during that entire move up and, and, and not play along in portfolio approach? Did I have opinions? You know, did I try and buy gold or, or did I play Apple too much? Or, you know, a lot of things that traders have been doing probably in the last, you know, two quarters that could have hurt them. One, having an opinion that we can't go any higher, which we could, and also, you know, having an opinion that Apple can't go any lower. So with both of those, you know, and that, that could have been something besides uh, 10 other reasons why you maybe didn't perform, whether your size was too big, your holding time wasn't there, your, you know, your marriage isn't great, your dog ate your, you know, your, 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 your scrapbook or your chart pattern uh, assembly, a lot of reasons. 
bottom line is you, you got to figure out what really happened. You know, what and why did you not perform? I know for me, um, I probably could have performed better. Okay, I need to work a little bit more on my process. I know during the last two weeks of April into that outside day reversal, I was a little skeptical because the market overheated. I met my objectives on a lot of my thesis. Started, I started in 2013. Eight, nine stocks that I picked, or seven or eight of them, met their targets within the first four to six weeks, and I trimmed and trailed them out, where I got rid of them, and they kept going higher. So internally, I was frustrated. I was like, why did I give all my good, you know, my good entries up too early? I should have known, but you never know how high these things are going to go. So for me, I know that it became a little frustrating. And then finally, when we had that outside day, you know, and things started to loosen up, and we were able to tactically trade the different ends of the ranges, and you know, it, it's kind of, you know, I feel like it's blown over, and, and you know, it didn't, for me, at least that, that helped with, you know, even killing me out. Where, you know, like I said today, you know, my strength is getting in there on the first day versus uh, a spot, getting confirmation that that was right the second day, adding in, and then typically the third day I'm out, and then if there's a fourth and a fifth day, I'm always like, damn, I had such great prices and all these things. What's the matter with me? Why didn't I hold? You know, but again, this time you didn't know. You didn't know if this was going to be a snapback to be sold. Were we going to reach the retest point? Were we going to go through it? Is this a snapback that's going to show commitment that, you know, we already put the summer lows in? These are all things that you don't know. So, you know, if you, if you give up things at prices where in your head that was your, your goal, that's, that's your plan, man. And just let the market confirm it, which it did. And if it goes without you, it goes without you. But what you don't do is you don't just revenge it and flip. And then all of a sudden be like, oh, now I got to get you know, my trade back by shorting this because I sold it you know, a while back. And meanwhile, the market doesn't realize when you sold it. So anyway, I'm kind of just talking about some thoughts out there because I, you know, I come across a lot of traders. We have many associated members in T3 Trading Group. And I've seen some people happy, some people frustrated, some people break monitors, some people laughing, some people crying. It's like, it's like Cats, the, the Broadway show. <laughs> no, um, but a lot of emotions, and especially when you come into the half of the year and you start looking at how you perform. But gone, done, new year, okay, right? New year. You, it's, it's a half a year, but it's a new year, okay? And, and we actually have a little bit of a re-rack in the market, too, where we're off our highs. We just, we're a little bit off our lows. We're going to perhaps get new leaders. Maybe we range out like this a little bit longer. Perhaps the, morning, the summer low is in, perhaps it's not. You know, so we're in a spot where you, know, you kind of could go from scratch here. Okay? We could go from scratch here and figure out if we stay tactical, and then if the composure shows us that we could go back to portfolio approach, we go back to, but we go the right way with the leaders, the stocks that are breaking out, the stocks that showed relative strength. We're not going back to old names that used to make us a lot of money. You know, we're not going to go back and have opinions on things that can't go down anymore or can't go up anymore and start setting yourself straight and take it week by week, month by month, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, you're back where you think you should be. You have a clear head. You're thinking straight, and then it's football season. Yippee, the fall, but don't let the summer go by too fast. Anyway, with that said, tomorrow's Friday. I didn't go over stocks because, you know, really, I'm just not in the mood to. Um, you know, we all know that Tesla's kind of hanging out and showing leadership. Amazon still looks good. Google, you know, fails intraday every time. Apple hit the lows. Um, Yahoo gave you a nice little snapback. The banks also gave you a four-day snapback into resistance. Regionals broke out before. Um, you know, Bank of America actually had a really strong day. So if you bought it in the 1240 below range, hopefully you trim and trailed some of it out of there. I still think that's great for the second half, but who knows if, you know, it needs more time. So, you know, these are all things that if you read the morning note or, you know, or you watch the morning call or you're just involved and get off the charts tonight, these are things that you will see a little bit more precise uh, data points with. You know, for now, it's Thursday. I have a, you know, th th you know, a few things i got to do later. I will be in for the Friday relaxed morning call tomorrow to, to you know, talk about how we can make a, you know, some shekels going into the weekend. Hopefully, all is well. You're enjoying yourself. You're enjoying your summer. You're somewhere where you want to be. And if you're not, you'll take steps in the right direction to get yourself there. Scott Riley, T3 Live, The Recap. See you tomorrow morning. Have a good night. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, 
and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms.